Hello everyone and welcome to the Buffalo History Museum. My name is Patrick F. Ryan, Programs and Education Coordinator, and today we've got another episode of our new YouTube series, History Untold, for you. Today, we're on the back steps of the museum, which overlook the Japanese gardens and Mirror Lake. Now, if you've never been back here before, there is a statue, which features the subject of our video for today, none other than Abraham Lincoln. Now, whether you work in a museum, are a bit of a history buff, or you just like a good story, perhaps no figure from American history draws more interest than our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. When it comes to Abraham Lincoln, well, most people, they are pretty familiar with his signature hat and of course, his patented facial hair. But did you know that the 16th president didn't always sport facial hair? Believe it or not, it was a young girl by the name of Grace Fidel from Westfield, New York, that first encourages the great emancipator to grow out his facial hair. Now, behind me and just across the street from the museum at Hoyt Lake is a statue that shows a little example of Lincoln before he grew out his beard. So how did a young girl from Western New York come into contact with perhaps America's greatest president, and not only that, but convince him to change his physical appearance? Well, on this episode of History Untold, we're gonna delve a little bit more into that story. And at its conclusion, we're gonna head up to our new exhibit continuum and show you some of our most important and unique Lincoln-related objects that we have in our collection. By the mid to late 1850s, Abraham Lincoln, well, his popularity began to skyrocket. In fact, he had already visited Buffalo, New York multiple times, including a trip in 1848 with his family where he was met and shown around the city by none other than former Whig president Millard Fillmore. By the time we get to 1860 though, Lincoln, who was now a presidential nominee, well, he was more famous than ever. Famous enough that even children in Western New York had begun to take note of the great rail splitter from Kentucky. One such young adolescent from the Western New York area that took particular interest in Abraham Lincoln was none other than Westfield's own Grace Bedell. Grace Bedell's father, Norman, was a stove maker, but even more than that, he was a rather staunch Republican, and his values, well, he imparted them to his young daughter, Grace, as well. In 1857, at the age of just 11 years old, Grace Bedell obtained a campaign poster from her father, Norman, that featured both Abraham Lincoln and his future vice president, Hannibal Hamlin. The first thing that Bedell notices about the poster is the rather uh, unusual appearance of the presidential nominee. Standing at six foot four and having relatively gangly arms and legs, at least according to his contemporaries, Lincoln's appearance was often the subject of criticism. In fact, the famous author, Nathaniel Hawthorne, he even went on to say that Lincoln was, quote, one of the homeliest men he had ever seen. Not exactly a glowing endorsement. That seems a little extreme, but even today, it's still contended by historians whether or not Lincoln did have some sort of genetic defect. Young Grace Bedell definitely took notice of this, along with many others during the 19th century, but she had an idea to fix it. In perhaps a moment of childhood innocence, she writes to President Lincoln suggesting that if he were to grow some whiskers on his face, perhaps that could make him a bit more attractive to his potential voters. On October 15, 1860, Grace Bedell reached out to the future president, suggesting that he do just that. Dear Sir, I am a little girl only 11 years old, but want you should be President of the United States very much, so I hope you won't think me very bold to write to such a great man as you are. Have you any little girls about as large as I am? If so, give them my love and tell her to write me if you cannot answer this letter. I have yet got four brothers and part of them will vote for you anyway, and if you let your whiskers grow, I will try and get the rest of them to vote for you. You would look a great deal better for your face is so thin. All the ladies like whiskers, and they would tease their husbands to vote for you, and then you would be president. My father is going to vote for you, and if I was a man, I would vote for you too. But I will try to get everyone to vote for you that I can. I think that rail fence around your picture makes it look very pretty. I have got a little baby sister. She is nine weeks old, and is just as cunning as can be. Lincoln, he wasn't too crazy about the idea of growing out his beard. Remember, 1860, the United States, we had been around for almost 100 years, and up to this point, no president had ever sported facial hair. 
Making no promises about actually growing out his hair, Lincoln writes back to young Grace Bedell in 1860. My dear little miss, your very agreeable letter of the 15th is received. I regret the necessity of saying I have no daughters. I have three sons, one 17, one nine, and one seven years of age. They, with their mother, constitute my whole family. As to the whiskers, having never worn any, do you not think people would call it a piece of silly affection if I were to begin it now? Your very sincere, well-wisher, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln doesn't make any official promises to Grace Bedell in his letter back, he does take the young girl's advice and in fact grows out his beard. Now by the election of 1860, Lincoln, he is the primary candidate for the Republican Party in a four-way race which features John Bell, John Breckinridge, and Lincoln's old rival Stephen A. Douglas. Although Lincoln doesn't appear on a ballot in 10 southern states, he ends up winning the election and, to celebrate, embarks on a whistle-stop train tour across the United States to greet his supporters. Embarking on the train tour from Illinois, February 11, 1861, Lincoln's goal is to visit as many American cities as possible, including a stop in Buffalo on February 16th. En route to Buffalo, Lincoln's train makes another stop, this time in Westfield, New York, home of none other than Grace Bedell. Today, we're in the Lincoln Bedell Statue Park right here in Westfield. It was established in 1999 to commemorate this momentous occasion in Westfield's history. Before a crowd of a couple thousand in Westfield, New York, Lincoln, now bearded, addressed the crowd. Afterwards, he asked a quick question. Was the young girl Grace Bedell, who had written him months before, in attendance? I am glad to see you. I suppose you ought to see me. But I certainly think that I have the best of the bargain. Some three months ago, I received a letter from a young lady here. It was a very pretty letter, and she advised me to let my whiskers grow, as it would improve my personal appearance. Acting partly upon her suggestion, I have done so. And now, if she is here, I would like to see her. After silence for a few moments, a young boy sitting on top of a fence post looked to the president, pointed into the crowd, and exclaimed, there she is. Lincoln proceeded to call young Grace Bedell on stage. There, the two met for a few brief moments, shared a hug and a kiss, and with that, Lincoln continued on with the rest of his whistle-stop train tour. Although the residents of Westfield never met Lincoln again, the story between him and a young girl from their town lived on forever. And Grace Bedell, she is now known as the young girl who encouraged a president to change his physical appearance. Along with the sculpture park, the story of Grace Bedell and Abraham Lincoln has ingrained itself into the local community in Westfield, New York. That includes multiple local businesses and restaurants. We are now in our new exhibit continuum, a bicentennial of Erie County in our Civil War section to show you, as promised, some of our most unique Lincoln-related objects and artifacts that we have in our collection. In the case behind me is a cane that was owned by none other than Abraham Lincoln and later gifted to local Buffalonian Julius Francis. If you've ever taken a look at our Lincoln statue out back where we filmed the first part of the episode, Francis made the first push to celebrate Abraham Lincoln's birthday. And now it is the longest running celebration of the 16th president's birth anywhere in the United States. Next to the cane in this case, we have a life mask of Abraham Lincoln that actually includes both of his hands as well. This was created by sculptor Leonard Volk, who, when based out of Chicago, would have used these molds to create more statues and pieces based around the former president. 